everybody! It's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy Wednesday to each of you. Thank you for stopping by. I'm wishing you a fantabulous hump day. Hoping that you're finding that today was getting over the hump of the week with a smile on your face and joy in your heart. But today is all about having a date with Jack. Yeah, I know, you know, so many of us, oh, I got another date with Jack. Got Jack the Ripper, where's Jack the Ripper? Got a rip, and you know, those seams, and you just kind of, and, and I don't blame you, I do too, because you've wasted thread, ain't cheap. Wasted time, I don't know about you, but time ain't cheap. There's only so much of it, right? So yeah, but you know, for years and years, um, I, was pulling or unpicking stitches. And I had seen people use a method that was so fast, but I couldn't figure it out. It took years for me to figure it out. And I'm hoping through this video, if you haven't seen this faster, easier method, that in fact it helps you too. Um, because it really does make dates with Jack not have to take so long. However, that does bring me to a point into a question. Are you an unpicker or are you a seam ripper? Unpicker or ripper? I will tell you I'm a little of both. It really depends on where I'm picking, how I'm picking, and if I can rip it. So I'm going to bring you in closer and I'm going to show you two different ways that I actually unpick my threads and there are certain circumstances when I do so. And then I'm going to show you the faster and more efficient with time and energy on how to get those seams ripped. So I'll see you in just a second as we together are going to have our date with Jack. Before we get started, I want to just talk about some parts of this the seam ripper, okay? Affectionately called Jack. Where the blade is actually where that bend is, is actually where that blade is and it's very important that your blade is not dull, okay? Simply right inside there, there's a little blade. If you are using a dull blade, the efficient method won't work as well, and it may distort your fabric. The whole purpose behind doing certain techniques of seam ripping is so that we do not distort our fabric, okay? You remember we did cut on width of or a lot of this one is actually cut width of fabric so these edges here are on a little more stretchy than on this side okay so if you were to yank this in any form or fashion if you would yank your fabric you're going to distort it and then you'll have more of a headache than just ripping out a seam so we want to be very very careful and one way of doing that is to be sure that you have a sharp blade. And I didn't know this, but you can actually buy replacements. I know it now, but you can buy replacements. Um, sometimes it's just easier to buy a new seam ripper though, right? The other thing, I searched and searched and searched for a title for that red bulb. And the only thing I got was that it is a protective bowl. Plain simple, protective ball. But that's what we're going to utilize to help us get some efficiency done. But the first thing, the first method I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about unpicking. And believe it or not, this first way I actually still do on the long arm. And sometimes I do it in piecing, especially if I have a really long strip. Now I've got you brought in really close. I'll bring you out further here in a little bit. I just want you to be able to see some of this. So <clears throat> I'm going to start at the end here. Now this particular area, I do not have a back stitch. So if you have a back stitch, you always want to take care of that first. But I simply come in here with the long piece, the long tip, and I get it started. Now I actually think my tent, my uh, machine wasn't threaded correctly. So it doesn't really matter though, because um, now it wasn't supposed to rip. This thing's really sharp. So um, it, 
it doesn't matter but I have to go back and re-thread my machine I I can see it so I'd get something I could grab and then I'd pull it a little okay let me see if I can do this different so I don't get in the way of the camera let me pull it down just move it over a little bit and I just grab onto that and it, and it gives me a little loop and I know this seems tedious but there's a couple of reasons now number one when it's on the long arm I don't feel like I have as much control um, over doing other methods so this is the way I do it but the other reason is if you look here I'm getting a nice tail so when I'm done ripping or pulling unpicking this stitch and it goes really fast once you get the hang of it but what you won't have all those itty bitty bits and I'm not distorting my fabric and I'm just simply keep on going and I'll show you here I'm just gonna rip I'm just gonna cut it here in just a sec get my thread snips and I'll show you on the back side what that actually looks like okay so and I would keep going until I was done it does seem tedious and it is but when you do that you get one long strip okay bam you're finished now that is tedious and I still do that on my long arm that's my method there are plenty of other methods but that's mine okay another method that works pretty well is if you go in here and you just basically snip every three four or five stitches okay and then you can very simply either pull each strand out or you can open up your fabric and it'll pull to the next one so the, but the, the thing is the, sh the less in between the smaller these get and you just have to go through and pull them through see and it goes pretty fast and you're not distorting your fabric pretty cool method and I use that sometimes um, when I'm stitching when I'm piecing I'll do it like that and you know especially in areas where like let's say I only wanted this area like you know inside of this long seam something happened maybe a, it didn't um, maybe I didn't get um, nested seams my points didn't match and I don't want to tear the whole seam out I just want to get before and after so I'll just sit here and very simply pick that out and then whenever I flip it over you'll get one of those and so it's just very easily that's my unpicking methods but it's time consuming now you might have to do it like I said I have to do it on my long arm that's I unpick on my long arm and sometimes I unpick when it's somewhere along a seam and then I'll fix this area and I'll go over do a little back stitch restitch do a little back stitch and that usually that way I can correct inside of a seam something that just wasn't right okay so that's another method the last method I'm gonna readjust my camera just a bit just so that you can see a little more but before I do that I'm going to show you how to get it started and this is the more efficient way this is you know if you sewed let's just say you sewed uh, two and a half inch squares together and you're just going to rip it or something like this that I have now I don't know how long it is but first thing I do is I get rid of my back stitching okay I had a little back stitching going on here remember you want to be careful not to yank on your fabric so I just simply get it started okay and I'm gonna pull you out so you can watch it in real action with the length but before I do I want to show you this bulb 
this protective ball, little red ball, I am going to put inside the, the two layers of fabric with the ball underneath the seam. And what that's going to do is it's going to spread apart your fabrics for you. And hopefully, and I'm just going to simply guide it through, that blade is going to catch all of these seams, okay? Um, but hopefully, it just helps that ball, helps it keep separated so I don't accidentally force, you know, my, this really sharp point into my fabric. That would be awful because then you're going to rip a hole, okay? You don't want to rip holes, so you do got to be careful when you do this. If you feel any tension, stop because you could be forcing your point through your fabric and ripping a hole, okay? But I'm just gonna simply take off my back stitch, get a little bit open, okay? I'm gonna set it in here and I'm gonna pull the camera out, but I'm gonna hold it just like this, okay? So it is in there and if you see, the point is on the top, the bulb is on the bottom, and that blade is hitting the stitches, okay? So I'm gonna pull you out for just a second. Okay, so I've got that ready to go. I think this is a little better, and I'm just simply gonna push. I'm, I'm holding it at the place. I can feel the ball in between my thumb and my pointer, okay? So I know that it's there, and I'm attempting to keep those fabrics separated. Now again, if you feel any tension, stop. But look guys, look how easy this is. And I love that noise. Okay. If you feel tension though, you could be ripping a hole right through your fabric. Well, that was nice. Here's the other thing that I wanted to share with you is it collects some of those little itty bitties okay that's a nice feature then you can just simply throw them away but if you do notice we've got some longer ones all right you can just simply pull those off now before you reuse any of this okay you want to get any itty bitties out because i'm telling you it might be quite the nightmare if you go to sew and then try to pull those itty bitties out after you've got a new seam. Now one method to get all these itty, other itty bitties out is you can use a lint roller. You can use uh, painter's tape. Remember I told you all I love me some painter's tape. There's another thing you can do. And they actually, I don't have one, but they actually do have a gadget that is, uh, it's like a rubber tip and it's like an eraser. And I think it's called the magic eraser. I'll have to look it up and then I'll put um, attention or attention text here um, to let you know what it's called. But you know, I'm always about saving money and I have a plenty of duct tape because I use it in the quilting room quite a bit. And of course I paint <laughs> the house, <laughs> paint walls, so I have plenty. So you just wanna make sure though that you do get all of those fuzzies and itty bitties off. Now you gotta love this black fabric or black thread on white fabric. This will definitely take um, a lint roller for me to get some of that up. But um, at any rate, those are my methods. I'll see you guys in just a that second. Was, that was simple, right? Very easy. I don't know what, it just didn't click. I don't know why, but it took a long time for me to figure it out. And I, I went ahead and re-sewed them together real quick because I wanted to show you. I didn't do any back stitching. I will go ahead and get it started just a little bit, just like I showed you. Just get it started. Pull it apart a little bit. Put the seam ripper in there and look. Might help if it was in there. It just simply, now I had a little tension so I stopped because it will rip a hole. I've, I've done that too. Matter of fact, that's what I was doing a lot of when I was learning how to do this. And it just, it's not hard guys. And it really does go fast and easy. Now, if your blade's not sharp inside your 
fabric or inside your seam ripper it this this isn't going to work well and that might have been part of the problem too because i had a seam ripper that was older than me so again it's that easy they're apart and it goes really quick and the more you do it the better you get so I hope this was helpful. I truly do. I will be on Facebook Live today at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link for that is down below. I hope that you'll come out and join us. Uh, I will be here on Friday again for the last week of the BF Quilt Along. And it's exciting because we're putting all those parts together. Now, I don't have mine, but I do have some tips and tricks that I want to share. So I'll be here again on Friday. I hope you'll stop by for that. And next Wednesday, as requested... I'm going to go ahead and do a t-shirt rag quilt style with you guys. Now I'm going to build mine a smaller version with you. Um, at least I think it's a smaller version. And um, so I'm going to do it with you. So I'm going to divide that out into three separate videos, just like I did when I did the rag quilt uh, series on how to do a simple block style rag, rag quilt. It's the same kind of you know, um, situation and I'm going to do it with you. And so we're going to have fun doing it. It's not hard. And I know a lot of you have asked, so we're going to start that next Wednesday. So I look forward to seeing you all then, but until next time, guys, may y'all continue to be inspired, productive, and joyful, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. I'll see y'all soon. Happy quilting.